Hello, hello and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. Today is Monday, so I hope you guys had a nice weekend. And in this video I want to have a look at S&P 500. I want to ponder a little bit, are we going to continue seeing nice gains that we have seen all the way since more or less December last year, more or less Christmas last year, or whether it's time to start being a little bit cautious in the stock markets. But before that, I would like to remind you to subscribe to the channel, ring that bell button so that you can see when I upload my new videos. Remember to share this video with your friends and colleagues so that more people can get some value out of this video. Of course, I do hope I provide some value to you guys. I hope I provide quite a lot of value to you. And of course, in return, you can just hit that like button. That will be appreciated. Now, talking about the S&P 500, I think there is still some potential for S&P 500 to keep rising, probably to retest recent highs. However, even though there is this potential to gain uh, some small percentages here and there, because there isn't that much left for S&P 500 to reach the previous highs, currently S&P 500 is at about 28.34, whereas the recent highs that we saw in September last year is at about 29.30. So just over 3% left to retaste the recent gains. However, I think it's time to be a little bit cautious in S&P 500. Again, if you want to stay long for a while, you might do that, but remember to have your stop losses in play. On the other hand, I personally would advise some caution now because after all, we've seen some nice gains since December and. Uh, as I mentioned to you, I've been participating in the QQQ trade. I'm out of that trade completely at the moment. And let me cover several reasons why I think it is time to step aside and see what S&P 500 is going to do over the next several weeks. First of all, current intermediate cycle since last December has been going on for over three months already. As these intermediate cycles in S&P 500 normally last for about half a year, there is still quite a lot of potential, I guess, for S&P 500 to keep either trending upwards or give us some volatility around the current levels. However, on the other hand, we're past the midpoint or we're past the expected midpoint and um, anytime over the next several weeks, we might see the beginning of a declining phase in this intermediate cycle. So it might be time to start being a little bit more cautious. And it might be more important nowadays uh, to remember about your stop losses. Another thing to remember about now is to give this video a like. Next couple of things that I want to draw your attention to is this RSI, 14-day RSI on the chart. It hasn't been into overbought territory, but it's been tangent to overbought territory, and uh, that might be enough for this intermediate cycle. Besides, one more thing to notice here is that the current price level is considerably higher than the 100 day moving average. And whenever SP 500 tended to be a little bit far from the 100 day moving average, it always tended to retest that within the intermediate cycle decline. Here's the next chart to show you what I mean. Let me move the webcam for a while. So this is S&P 500 since that uh, drop in um, 2016. We see the 100 day moving average on the chart as well. And these black lines show my take on the intermediate cycles in S&P 500. That's three years of data and we have one, two, three, four, five, six cycles. So although the duration can range anywhere between, I guess, four to eight months, on average, that would be around half a year per cycle. And look, whenever the S&P 500 was stretched a little bit too far above the 100-day moving average, it always at least retested that 100-day moving average or, of course, went below that. And as I mentioned a moment ago, we are currently a little bit far above that 100 day moving average and uh, we might retest that maybe over the next several weeks. So what is our strategy here? Well to recap, the current intermediate cycle has just passed its kind of expected midpoint. 
The first daily cycle lasted for over two months. Usually these daily cycles last for around two months or so. The current daily cycle has been going on for just under one month. And since this intermediate cycle has some potential to continue its rally, after all, it's only been going on for three months. If we see prices above 2860, basically if we see S&P 500 break above the recent high in the end of March with somewhat of a significant force, that would indicate that there is quite a good chance of S&P 500 retesting the recent highs at 29, 2940, something like that. On the other hand, if S&P 500 breaks below the recent lows, also at the end of March, that's somewhere around 2787, something like that. Say, this sort of volatility over the next couple of weeks, within this short-term daily cycle, then that would probably mean that after some volatility, after another several weeks and after another daily cycle, it will be time for S&P 500 to enter the declining phase of the current intermediate cycle. So again, currently I'm out of the QQQ trade. However, I do hold some long-term positions in some of the companies that I like. And for you, if you want to keep the long positions, I would suggest keeping an eye on the price action and I would suggest remembering about your stop losses. I would suggest a stop loss somewhere at about 27.87, as I said. So that is my take on S&P 500. Let me know what you guys think. Comments are also welcome, as well as the likes under the video. And good luck in your trades.